If you're on the hunt for some fun and exciting alternatives to chocolate this year for Easter, then this is the video for you, so let's hop straight into it. You never want your child to go without or feel like they're missing out on anything, and it's a really hard balancing act to figure out how you can create those fun, exciting childhood memories without compromising on what you know is going to be best for your child. And here in the Rashidi household, chocolate is not what is best for our children because first of all, they're lactose intolerant. And second of all, they just react really badly to the sugar that's in chocolate. And last year we gave them three mini chocolate eggs and it was a really bad experience, which then means that we're not getting those childhood memories that we want for them that are exciting and fun and enjoyable for the whole family. The first step if you want to be doing alternative Easter eggs is to go to the shops and to pick up some reusable eggshells. I went to Spotlight because I had done some research and saw that they were first of all having a sale and who doesn't love a bargain and also their collection of reusable eggs was much greater than any other shop and I loved the fact that they had different themes and different sizes. Here's a quick little snapshot of my journey. I ended up having to go to two different spotlights in order to get all the eggs that I wanted to get. Easter is right around the corner and in our household we try to stick away from confectionery just because the girls go on crazy sugar highs. So today I am going to spotlight with my sister and we're going to pick up some alternative Easter presents. So if this sounds interesting to you give it a big thumbs up because it really does support my channel so let's go Easter shopping Unfortunately, this spotlight didn't have all the stock that I am needing, so road trip continues! getting three different sizes and I highly recommend that you do get three sizes because it means that when you're stuffing your Easter eggs you're able to put in different objects and amounts depending on that size. This year for small I have the chicken and Easter bunny eggs. In the medium size I have the painted looking eggs. I found these large Easter eggs. These were really hard to find, but absolutely worth the time, energy, and effort. If you are budget friendly like myself and you're wanting to make sure that you don't overspend this Easter, here is a budget friendly tip just for you. Once you know what sizes of eggshells you have and how many of each sizes you have, sit down and come up with a plan. That way you go to the shops with a purpose of getting the items that you need in order to stuff your eggs. It can be so easy when you see all the Easter things to just grab and grab and grab and then you may either overbuy or underbuy and I know personally neither of those scenarios are going to help me out as a mum of three. Now I'm going to share how I'll be stuffing our Easter eggs this year. With our small Easter eggs this year because only the oldest girls will be participating because Finn is just a little bit too young by like literally maybe a month or two. The girls are going to get four of these eggs each, two chicken and two bunnies. And because of those eggshells, I am going to put in one of these each. 
I'm going to put a chicken in the chicken egg and a bunny in the bunny egg. I think it's hilarious and I really like that. I don't know if the girls are going to get as much of the kick out of it. In the other two eggs, I am going to put these foam stickers. Once again, I am going to theme it so that all of the foam chicken stickers go into the chicken shell and all of the foam bunny stickers go into the bunny shell. This is such an easy filler for those little eggs and they weren't expensive at all. So let's get right into the medium size eggs. Without medium size eggs, because we're just having to halve the packet this year, the girls will be getting three eggs each. And the plan that we came up with is that they are going to get two eggs full of food and one egg that has got some rolled up sticker sheets. This is the sticker book that I picked up from Spotlight. It was on sale and it has so many great sheets in there of stickers and they're good quality and the girls are going to love playing with this. I'm gonna roll up a couple of sheets and stuff that into the medium size egg. Now, because we don't want the girls to miss out on eating chocolate, we do have a chocolate alternative for them. And that is these smushed balls. These are whole food chocolate brownie balls and they are delicious. I can sit down and munch on a whole packet all by myself and the girls really enjoy them. And that way they're still getting their chocolate treat without the excess amount of sugar and dairy involved. And in the final medium size egg, we are going to do a whole heap of dried fruits. Our kids think that this is candy. And so that is how we're going to be filling it in for them. So while I did my weekly grocery shop, I picked up three packets of dried fruit. Something else that you can be putting into these medium size eggs could be Easter stamps. If you can find the self inked ones, they would be amazing. I couldn't find any this year, otherwise I'd be putting them into my Easter shells. Or the other thing you could be doing is finding some chalk and putting that into your Easter eggs. I know that the girl's aunt has actually got them chalk this year, so I'm not getting that for them. But those are some extra ideas that you could be putting into some medium size eggs. So in one of the eggs, they will have a wind up bunny. I think those bunnies cost maybe a dollar fifty or even a dollar, so they were super cheap from Kmart. And then in the final egg, we are going to put marshmallows in there and hide a Kinder Surprise. We think that those eggs, because it's just the shell and it's a hollow egg that has a toy inside, is a good compromise for them to have something that is chocolate without it being a whole heap of chocolate and we will see how it goes. So stay tuned for our Easter vlog to see how they react to that amount of chocolate. They're not dairy free, they just have an intolerance to a lot of lactose and so this little egg will be a good compromise for them and yeah we're going to stick some marshmallows around the outside so it's kind of like a surprise in the center. If you find some springtime or Easter play-doh or even a normal tub of play-doh you could put that inside. You could roll up any like uh, Easter or just normal undies or socks that could go inside, even swimmers. And if you have little girls like me, you could even be putting hair accessories into these large Easter egg shells. That is how we are going to be filling up our Easter eggs for our Easter egg hunt. This is the first time that we're doing an Easter egg hunt and I'm really excited to be doing it with them. They're definitely at the age where they will be enjoying it. I don't know whether I'm gonna do it outside or inside. Our backyard doesn't really have a lot of hiding spaces and we also have a snake at the moment somewhere hiding. So it's probably gonna be an inside hunt, but this is question of the day. If you do a indoors Easter egg hunt, where are some spots that you'd love to hide Easter eggs that the kids can find, but also a little bit challenging? I'd love to hear your wisdom on this. So comment down below. On top of this, we also are giving our kids three Easter presents. The first present that I am going to share with you, I got off Facebook Marketplace. I found they were a little bit cheaper over there. Quality wise, I think there definitely is better quality the more that you pay for it, but this will still be a great toy for them, especially in the car. 
if you haven't seen these before, they're little pop boards. They're great for keeping little hands busy. So it's kind of like having bubble wrap where they go through and pop it all in and then flip it over and pop it up. The next two presents I picked up at Aldi this morning and they were so cheap. I picked up an activity for them to do after Easter or even on Easter Sunday, which are these mosaic packs. I feel like this is mess free fun and both age groups are going to enjoy it, my two and a half and four and a half year old. And then finally I bought them these Easter activity books. Funny story that Amira was actually standing with me when I was searching for these and I asked for her input whether she wanted a colouring in book, a sticker book or an activity book that had both and she said she actually likes doing both. I know Zoe's attention span right now is quite small and so she'll probably do like one page of scribble and then be over it. So I'm also buying it for Amira and we like to kind of keep things fair and consistent at the moment and that is the reason why I picked up two of the same type. When it comes to Phineas's first Easter, I will probably buy him some baby num nums because he will be up to the chewing stage and maybe some puff sticks because he's really enjoying them at the moment but he's so little he doesn't really care about it and i think a more precious memory for him is to have a picture with him and his sisters and a family photo of his first easter because that's going to be something to cherish forever if you have enjoyed today's video about alternative things that you can be giving your children for easter this year please give this video a big thumbs up it really does support my channel don't forget to hit subscribe and tap the bell because i upload new videos every Monday and Thursday and stay tuned for our next video because it'll be about how you can decorate your house in a child friendly way for Easter and the next video after that will be our actual Easter day vlog. Thank you so much for tuning in because this parenting geek doesn't come with a rule book for you only have each other.